my name is Sharon. I'm just a ticked off hairdresser with a split and headache. I'm good at plenty of things. Taking no for an answer ain't one of them. Congratulations on this. It is wonderful. Um, Alan, I want to start with you. In the film, when Ed first meets Sharon, she is kind of a mess. I'm curious what your first impression after meeting Hillary was. Same same impression. I mean, she could hardly get it. Licks, lipstick up to here. She looked more like the Joker than uh, I was like, who is who am I walking into this with? Um, no, actually, you know, I look, I, I, I'm a rookie compared to Hillary and her decorated pedigree, you know, so so I came into this with with um, a lot of apprehension from the, you know, considering like I just I'm, I'm, I'm almost new to the business compared to what she's done. And I was so grateful that she wanted to be a part of this, knowing that I was, you know, that I was in. Um, uh, I just I just felt like everything about her from joining the film to meeting her was she was so full of graciousness um the complete you know antithesis to who uh Sharon is um um so I I've, I've just had the best time on the film with her would you trust her with a pair of scissors <laughs> if she needed to give you a little trim a little trim Am I getting like or a fade? Am I getting like a fade, or is this just like a little, just a couple pieces off the top? That's a good question. Well, you wouldn't want a couple pieces off the top. You'd need me to go deeper because I, I think I would have to really get in there. Your hair is perfect, by the way. But what I mean is, I don't know how to just do a little bit. I get in there and I really. Yeah, get it are you done. method? Did you like? Did you like? I did. Learn I learned how, how to, to do this. I did. did you, okay, good. I, did. I believe her. I, you know what? You. I away. did, but the thing is, is that when I was cutting the extras hair, because it's a movie, you have to keep doing the same side because of um, continuity. <laughs> so they went out with one side of their head completely short and the other side. But I don't know how to do Wait a, a little. I, so I, I would have one terribly cut side of my head chopped to bits. <laughs> yes. And I'd look, so it looked like Edward, Edward Scissorhand had yeah, ADHD. So you just walk around like this when you need to be, you know, together. Okay, okay. And then this side when you're just feeling a little off. I'm going to amend my answer. I'm going to go I'm gonna go with no scissors in her hands for my cut. Yeah, something tells me I do not want the Hillary swing yeah. if, if, if it comes to that. Well, hi there. We well, must be Michelle. I'm always fascinated, Hillary, if, if, if somebody, you know, Sharon is still around, obviously, to find out an Oscar winner is playing her. I can't even imagine what that reaction is. What what was her reaction when she found out it's you? I don't know. We'd have to ask her. But I think it's more the reverse because I feel like, oh, my gosh, they're going to expect so much from me. I hope I don't mess it up. And I hope I do justice to their story because I've played so many real life people and you do feel a great responsibility and you don't have as much leeway to like, you know, be um, just like out of the box. You're like, oh, this is this person and I wanna make sure that I do that justice and honor to them. I'm not comfortable with this. I'm her father. I'm supposed to be the one taking care of her. You're gonna have to get comfortable being uncomfortable because this ain't about you, it's about your little girl. There are so many great lines and lessons that we learn from Sharon, who clearly is an ordinary, Angel. One of them is start getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, mm -hmm. which I think is a great lesson because mm -hmm. most of us um, aren't good at that. And I'm curious, and I'll start with you, Hillary, when was the last time you were truly uncomfortable and had to almost embrace the idea of getting comfortable with being uncomfortable? You know what? I actually have to say, I think there are moments every day that that happens. Just, and it's not anything that's great or grand. Sometimes it's just in the little things. I mean, like for instance, the shoes that I was wearing earlier, they were <laughs> hella uncomfortable. <laughs> I've seen the blisters, I believe her. Um, but no, I mean, and joking aside, you know, there's just moments in a day that you have to be reminded to not take things for granted that we have. And um, and it's easy to complain. And it's, it's if you find, a kind of an attitude of gratitude, it melts away the 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 um, the uncomfortableness. I, the, I, yesterday was I was doing a, a, a podcast yesterday, and you never really know what you're going to get into on those. But but uh, the conversation came around to mental health struggles and issues that I've had, bipolar, dealt with suicidal ideations and suicide, and um, it's it never gets easy. But I feel like my entire purpose in, in life is to. You know, because of my experience is to share that experience with others in a way that could save lives. And um, it it's one of those things that like every day I go like, I really hope this doesn't come up today. And then when it comes up, you go like, this is uncomfortable, but I'm going to step into this moment. And hopefully this, um, you know, this awakens something in somebody else. Thank that you needs so it. much for doing that. Um, and so it's, uh, so yeah, so just yesterday I was super uncomfortable, but you know what, that's like, I, th I think it's so true. I'm so grateful for the question because it, it is in those moments that we find our truest 
ourselves, and it, that resonates the, the deepest with those around us. Officials are saying be prepared for what they're calling the worst blizzard in state history. I think what makes what Sharon and the town pulled off even more impressive was the yeah. fact that there were no cell phones. <laughs> I mean, there are, there are scenes in this, you're on the edge of your seat, and you're like, oh, God, if they just had a cell phone. I'm so impressed by her story. What impressed you the most by what she pulled off? Well, you know, it's a, almost everything Sharon did was amazing, right? She was this hairdresser who moved mountains. Um, and uh, and it's funny because she's such an Aaron Brockovich spirited woman. We would call her Sharon Brockovich. Um, <laughs> but, but it is very true. No cell phones, no technology. Uh, th there are many, many ways that Sharon helped this family um, along the way. She saw a family in need, a father who lost his wife, a sick child. She just felt moved in her heart to do something for this family she had never met. And when she sort of bulldozed her way into their life and started figuring out ways to help with the medical bills and help with the kids and do all these things, this girl needed a transplant, a liver transplant to live. And the day the transplant, uh, the liver became available was the worst storm in Louisville history. And this was a storm so bad people couldn't make it out to their front steps. And she single-handedly rallied a community to carve a path through this storm and using the radio and the news and, you know, because there were no cell phones to your point. And so that was just an impossible task that they were determined to accomplish to save this girl's life. And it required the help of the entire community calling in on their phones to the news and then bringing shovels to clear, you know, a landing spot for a helicopter. And it brought the entire community together. And that's really the thing that we loved so much about this story was that one person can make a decision to help another person and it can bring an entire community together. We don't need to be running around worrying about money and bills right now. I just want to be with my family. Life's about saying yes and then figuring out how. You know, one of the great lessons is the fact that whole idea of say yes, figure it out later. Yes. And I would imagine <laughs> as filmmakers, you have had to do that occasionally. Yeah, when, like, we, you know, when, when we agreed to do the movie, it was say yes and we'll figure yeah, it how out are we, How are we going to do this? Are <laughs> we going to go into this? a snowstorm somewhere? What are we going to do? This movie right. calls for a hundred year blizzard. What's going to happen? Yeah. And oddly, so we shot the movie in Winnipeg, Canada, where it snows frequently because uh, we didn't want to go to Kentucky because it, it, you don't know what you're going to get. And um, an amazing thing happened. A hundred year blizzard descended upon Winnipeg while we were shooting the movie. <laughs> it was the craziest thing. Yeah. Shut the town down. We had to figure out ways to keep the shooting, the filming going because our actors were on a tight schedule. And so uh, we got our snow. We, we got did, our snow. We definitely our got snow. our snow. <laughs> You know what you also got is Alan Richard on a roller skates. Alan is a much better skater than we depicted in the movie, I will say that. Okay. Directing this film, I think, of course, always about all the skills that I need to make sure my actors have. Like Hillary had to learn how to cut hair. Alan had to learn the roofing. And I and I put together, uh, weeks before we started shooting, we had like a roller skating party at the rink to, so I could assess how well each of my actors could skate. <laughs> and the little girl, Emily, who plays Michelle, who's you know, she was five, six years old at the time. She did, could not skate at all. So we ended up spending three weeks getting her good enough to just make her way across the floor. <laughs> she was amazing. <laughs> but Alan, I think, uh, you know, he he definitely played up the clumsiness for oh, the role. Yeah. I mean, he can do wheelies and flips, and it was yeah. like, okay, all right. Yeah, all right. Bye, Bye. Bye. I'm glad you brought up the young actor actresses because I, I hate to admit it, I am the kind of person that a kid actor can ruin the whole film for me. Me too. It's one thing to get Hilary Swank and Alan in there. These two gals were fantastic. Uh, and, you know, thank you for saying that because, I, and I hope they hear it. Um, we, it's critical in a movie like this where the heart and soul of the film is centered around a child or children. And so we fought long and hard and searched high and wide to find these kids and then to make these deals work to get them to Winnipeg. And they are exceptional, both of them. And uh, Skywalker Hughes, by the way, is the name of the older sister. Her name is Skywalker. And then little uh, Emily Mitchell, plays Michelle, and she was barely six years old. To be, to be able to carry a movie that way, authentically, we, we spent a lot of time with those kids to make sure that uh, it played uh, in a way that was not only not distracting, because I feel the same way that you do, but also we could just lose ourselves in it and believe them as a family. A lot, yeah, a lot. Emily delivers a lot of, how did a six-year-old just do that moments? And uh, I have three kids myself. I'm like, none of my three kids could do it. Emily <laughs> just did. There's she loves it. About it. She, she loves it. it, yeah. And every day she'd get on the walkie, John, can you hear me? John, <laughs> hi. Hi, she loved being on set. This is our last chance. If we don't take it, Michelle dies. How did it become your responsibility to save her? Because I'm here. Because I can.